Hi, I'm Chris Bailey. If you're watching this video, there's a decent chance that you just found out that you are getting your gallbladder removed. Technically speaking, a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Whether you're in the emergency room, the hospital, or in the office, I'll assume that you and your surgeon have already discussed why and that surgery is the best option for you. The gallbladder is a hollow organ whose function is to squeeze bile into your digestive tract to help digest certain foods. It may have been these same foods that prompted you to seek medical attention in the first place. As with any organ system, there are a number of mechanical issues that can arise. The most common conditions prompting gallbladder removal are problems related to gallstones or sludge such as pain, blockage of the bile duct, or pancreatitis, or an inflamed or infected gallbladder for an otherwise yet to be determined cause. Biliary dyskinesia or abnormal gallbladder contraction, cancer, or some other form of mass or obstruction. Today we're going to discuss the most common pre and post operative concerns surrounding your surgery. For more general information, please see the video titled General Surgery Expectations. Everyone's biggest concern with surgery, including mine, are the what ifs. This list is by no means exhaustive, but it certainly covers the majority of issues that could come up with your surgery. Regardless of the outcome, know that you will be treated in the way that I would want to be treated in every case. Wound infections are usually superficial or on the surface and can be treated by draining the site. Bleeding can happen with any operation. Every step will be taken to ensure that this does not take place. Obstruction of the bile duct with stones, also uncommon, and may require additional procedures to remedy. There is possible conversion to an open operation, which means a large incision and hospital admission, usually for three days. We would only do this if it became unsafe to continue using the small incisions. Bile duct injury and or leak. These occur very rarely. Should this occur, your surgeon will discuss the next steps in detail, many of which require additional procedures. A hernia is a protrusion of tissue through a weak spot in your incision. Hernias are not common after laparoscopic surgery, but do occur. An operation will be necessary to repair the hernia. A gastrointestinal tract injury is a serious complication that if missed could be life-threatening. Immediate intraoperative repair would follow. Although the procedures can be highly variable, I'll do my best to describe your surgery. Once anesthesia has been induced, we will expose your belly and prep the skin for sterilization. It is normal for patients to feel self-conscious or nervous about this, but make no mistake, everyone in the room at this point is a professional and every effort will be made to maintain your dignity. After performing one final pre-check, the procedure begins with several small incisions on your belly. The type of cholecystectomy being performed will dictate their size and exact number, but it will be some combination of one to two centimeter incisions under your right rib cage and belly button. Upon entry, we will insufflate your belly with carbon dioxide. The special ports will allow a camera and long instruments inside, and we will take a look around. As long as there are no additional abnormalities, the instruments will then be used to manipulate your gallbladder. The gallbladder will be free from the liver, bile ducts, and surrounding arteries. A special bag will be used to pull it out with the largest incision. The bile ducts may be explored with the use of a flexible scope during the surgery. Your surgeon may take an x-ray of the bile ducts during the procedure. Contrast dye will be injected into the ducts. And the dye lets your surgeon see any stones that may be blocking the bile ducts. The stones are found more surgery may be done to remove them. A drain may be inserted. This will keep fluid from building up in the treatment area. Your surgeon will remove the drain sometime after the surgery. 
then a final inspection of the abdomen and surgery site will be performed and removal of the gas and ports. The incisions will be closed with absorbable suture covered with strips that look like small pieces of packing tape and a gauze bandage. Sometimes we will use skin glue instead. Depending on the complexity and severity of the case, you can be in surgery for as little as 25 minutes to as long as 3 hours. Most cases are finished in about 45 minutes. Know that the time it takes is irrelevant to us as long as a good quality operation is performed. These times are only meant for generalization. Do place value on the fact that you will be watched closely until you're awake in the recovery room and your family will be notified of your condition by the surgeon and staff once the operation is complete. In most circumstances, you'll head directly home after surgery. Don't be concerned, this is common in standard of care. The person driving you should be able to handle filling your prescriptions, if not already dealt with while you're in the operating room. As with any type of surgery, it is reasonable to expect some amount of pain. This varies with individual patients and depends on your body's response to pain medication. Fortunately, there is usually minimal pain associated with this operation. The abdomen will be sore as well as the small incision sites, and some patients have shoulder pain for the first day or two. See the general surgery expectation video for more recommendations on pain control. The gallbladder is a little bit different than the appendix. Although you do not need it to survive, it will take your body a little while to get used to it being gone, usually about four to six weeks. Depending on the preoperative condition of your gallbladder, your body may have bypassed it already before surgery. In this case, you'll feel better almost immediately. On the other hand, it may take a little longer. You are probably wondering what you can eat after your surgery. Some patients may have loose bowel movements with fatty foods. This may occur because bile is not being concentrated in the gallbladder and is spilled directly into the small intestine from the liver. It often takes a few days to a few weeks for your body to adjust. Despite this, you are permitted to eat what you like. Most patients find that a bland diet of foods such as toast, rice, bananas, soup, pasta, etc are easiest to digest initially. After the initial recovery period, most people can tolerate a variety of foods without difficulty. Most patients feel strong enough to return to work in one to two weeks following the operation. Some may return sooner if they do desk work. If you do work that requires you to lift greater than 20 pounds or bend over, then you may need to be placed on restricted work duty until you have your post-operative appointment. If you need a letter or work excuse to be sent to your employer, please let your surgeon or nurse know. You may resume sexual relations when it feels comfortable to you. After two weeks, the likelihood of you affecting the surgery is very low, but the chance the surgical sites will affect you in the form of pain is relatively high. As a general rule, if it hurts, just avoid it for the first few weeks. I know things can move quickly in the operating room. Sometimes you're already home before you even think of the questions you would have asked. Hopefully this video will answer most of those questions and give you confidence after going home. Thank you so much for allowing us to participate in your care.